I was really excited to share my latest bag purchase with you all, and then Fashion File had to ruin it. Let's get into it. I'll be chunking this video into two parts, so if you're interested in the Dior 30 Montaigne bag review, click the link above. Otherwise, this portion of the video will be focused around my purchase experience with this bag. Just throwing that out there. I've been looking to build out my Dior handbag collection, and after purchasing my two Lady Dior bags, which I still love and adore, I was looking for something maybe a little bit more on the casual side. And so during a recent business trip, I was able to dip into a couple stores, a Dior boutique, and then a department store, and check out some different bags. And one of the bags in particular I was looking at was the Bobby bag. And just after trying it on, kind of walking around the store, kind of fiddling with it, I just decided it was not the bag for me. It just wasn't necessarily my style. So moving on from the Bobby bag, I was looking at some other potential styles and the 30 Montaigne actually got onto my radar. Now this is one that I have been looking at off and on for quite a while. However, the box calfskin leather, for me, I'm just a little leery of it just because of the wear and tear or how easy it is to scratch that leather. And once you do scratch it, how just visible the wear and tear can be. And I just, for me, I know that that would drive me absolutely insane over time. It would bug me just endlessly. So I just don't necessarily wanna go down that route. Now, of course, on the flip side, with the 30 Montaigne, it is available in the oblique pattern, but when you look at that bag, and don't get me wrong, I think that that is a gorgeous bag. And I've actually been eyeing that up kind of when I was going back and forth with the bag I'm gonna show you here in a second and the oblique version in navy in particular. I just think it's a gorgeous color combination with the navy and the gold hardware. It's just, there's a richness to it. But for me, the amount of money that you're gonna spend on that, it's a lot for a fabric bag in essence. And when you look at the overall size of it, it being fabric, the price, for me, it's just that I can't justify that price. So after feeling a little defeated with the Bobby bag, the other 30 Montaigne models, I was about to walk out of the store, but my essay goes, hold on one minute, I may have a bag that you may be interested in. So she walks away and then comes back with this version of the 30 Montaigne. It is in the ultra matte black hardware, black grained calfskin, and I instantly fell in love with it. As soon as she put it in my hands, I was walking over to the mirror, looking at myself in it, posing, just being a total goofball. But I just absolutely fell in love with this bag. I love the black hardware with the black bag. I thought it was so edgy and so chic. And the bag being in the grain calfskin, I thought that it was definitely going to wear better over time. And just all the things about this bag, I just absolutely fell in love with. I could not put the bag down. As I was looking at it from this angle and that angle, I was falling more and more in love with it until I really started to examine the bag. Obviously this was a display bag and so everyone and their brother has probably tried it on, touched it, messed around with it, and scratched it. As I opened the flap on this bag, the inner flap was horribly scratched. It was like somebody had just had their cat with them. It just had markings all on the inside of it. And looking at the strap, there were different points all over the strap that were just wrinkled and almost looked folded and bent. Like it looked like it had been put through the ringer. Now, of course, this is a display bag and it is gonna show a lot of wear and tear, but that definitely put a red flag in my mind that, oh my goodness, over time is my bag gonna look like that? Just kind of, you know, filed that in the back of my mind, but I was really focused on this bag. And But because of all that, I said, you know what? I really need to think about it. Let me get back home. I have a flight to catch. I will text you in the morning. So as soon as I got on the plane, of course, I'm thinking through all this stuff. I'm looking at the pictures on my phone and just kind of going back and forth with it. But I eventually did end up deciding, you know what, it just, was because that was a display bag. That's the only reason why it looked like that. So once I get a new bag, if I can get a new bag, mine's not gonna look like that. So I texted her the next morning. I said, if you can find me a new one, I absolutely am interested and I'm absolutely wanting this bag. She scoured the country looking coast to coast for this, contacting stores in Florida, all the way out to Hawaii, trying to find a new bag. And unfortunately, I guess because of how long ago the bag came out, it's been a few seasons, it's been some time, and just a lot of people with these display bags in store had been touching them, messing with them, and unfortunately, 
damaging them. So there was not a single one left in the US that looked any better than the one that I saw in that boutique. So unfortunately, going through a Dior boutique for this bag was a no-go. So for you know what's and giggles, I decided to go into Fashion File to see if I could find a pre-loved bag in very good condition. And lo and behold, there was one in Ultramat Navy that was in really good condition. The price was right. And so I decided, you know what, even if I can't get it in the black, which is what I really had my heart set on, I really liked it in the Navy. I thought it was a really pretty bag. So let me take a chance on it. Let's order it. Let's see what it's about. So I ordered it. It arrived in a very timely fashion. And I will say that my experience with Fashion File has been a little mixed. I've had some good experiences. I've had some not so good experiences. So I was really holding out hope for this. I was going to really try and give them the benefit of the doubt given my bad past experiences. And so with this, as soon as I got the package, I was so excited. I opened it. I was really looking forward to doing a great first impression video of this bag in particular. But upon opening it and seeing what was inside, the purpose of this video quickly went from a first impressions video of a bag that I had really had my heart set on and I was very excited about initially to now talking about Fashion File and as a follow-up to another video that I did on Fashion File and talking about how you really have to be very very cautious with that platform because of the way that they represent their products. A while back, I had done a video on five watchouts with Fashion File. If you haven't seen it, I'll link it above. But in that video, I had mentioned some things about being cautious with them and just some general things on the platform. And some people had reached out, they had left comments saying that I was maybe being a little tad harsh on Fashion File, that I wasn't putting enough onus on consumers or on luxury shoppers, that we needed to do our due diligence when it comes to these listings. Well, I am here to say that when it comes to Fashion File, the photos that they use on their listings are not 100% representative of the actual item's condition. Looking at the actual listing of the item on Fashion Files website, we'll scroll down to the condition, which they have labeled as excellent. We will open this up and look at what they've kind of noted in this. So looking at the exterior, they do comment on faint corner wear. In addition to the interior of the bag, there are card slots that are stretched. And getting the actual item, I would agree with that assessment. However, Looking at the bag itself, there are some things that they did not mention in this listing that I want to call attention to. The first of which is the hardware in two spots in particular. The first is with the CD clasp here on the front. Obviously, it's the ultra matte. It's going to show some kind of markings on the front just because of the nature of the closure. I expected that. But when I got this and I looked really closely at the CD on the front, there were some markings. You angle it just right in the lighting. You can see it. I honestly, I could live with it. It's not a huge deal breaker, but it wasn't depicted in any of the photos or the description. The second place was actually on this top part right here. This hardware that you feed the strap through, it's you know, right here along the top. There is a scuff mark on it that was not depicted in any of the photos and was not in the description yet again. And honestly, I could live with both of these. However, the one thing I cannot live with on this piece is the strap. So in looking at the strap, there is actually a hole that the previous owner had punched through that definitely was not depicted or mentioned in the description. Now, of course, when I opened the package, looked at the bag, saw the strap, saw the hole punched into it, I quickly went into investigative mode. I went and watched countless unboxings, review videos, follow-up review videos on YouTube. No one mentioned a hole being punched into a strap. I went over to the Dior website and looked at all the different photos of all the different types of 30 Montaigne bags looking at every single angle of this strap to see, well, maybe this is actually a part of the bag. And in not one photo did I see that anywhere on Dior's website. In addition, I went back and looked at all the video and the photos that I had shot while being in store and trying on this bag to see, well, is there a hole punched into the strap in any of these other 30 Montaigne bags? And not a single one of them had a hole like this. So I really tried to rule out the possibility that this was in fact 
a part of this bag from Dior. And in comparing this hole to the others with this strap, because that's one of the benefits of this bag is that it does have an adjustable strap. They're actual, like you can tell that Dior did this. I highly doubt they did this. That is where I'm just putting all the different pieces together to say that the previous owner punched this probably to really shorten the strap on this bag and I'm sorry, at every angle of me trying on the bag, whether it's crossbody, shoulder bag, short shoulder bag, I am always seeing the hole punch front and center. So I have a very difficult time believing that no one at Fashion File saw this on this strap. They intentionally, this is my opinion, but they intentionally left this off and then made it so every angle that they captured from the photography standpoint did not show the hole punched in the strap. Now, of course, after noticing the strap, I did reach out to their customer service team and inquired about what could be done to correct the situation, whether it was a partial refund, maybe they were aware of something that could be done to repair the strap, or maybe there was another course of action that could be taken. Now, as a result of their investigation, they did end up siding with me on the fact that the condition was not being accurately represented. And as such, they did offer me a $100 partial refund if I ended up keeping the bag. Now, I have been sitting on it for the past couple days thinking through well, what do I want to do does she stay or does she go at the end of the day the bag is tainted in my mind now every time I look at it I just think of fashion file and their listings not being a hundred percent accurate and when I look at this bag now the whole situation it just annoys me and frankly I'm just turned off by the bag so sadly this bag is going back to fashion file and before some of you come at me saying I'm being dramatic or I'm overreacting over a little scuff mark and a hole in a straw strap, I did strongly consider keeping this bag. I actually did consider taking the strap to somebody here locally where I live or even sending it off to some cobblers. I did get a couple quotes on what it would take to fix the strap. So I really did think through keeping this bag and I'm actually still thinking about keeping it. But no, it's going back to fashion file because whenever it comes to these luxury purchases, everything should be making us happy and bringing us joy. And in looking at this bag, it just makes me angry. It makes me think of fashion file and this really bad experience and so this item as much as I love it don't get me wrong I still love this bag it just brings up memories for me that are not pleasant and because of that she has to go so why am I sharing all this as another word of caution when it comes to fashion file they say that they strive in their listings to be as transparent as possible as all the items that they have are pre-owned but that's not always the case and while I was a detective on this listing and zooming in on all the photos to try and catch things that they didn't say in the description, I am only able to make my decision based on what they share in the listing. If they're leaving things out, I have no control over that as a consumer. And really, that's one of the reasons why I'm always hesitant to go the pre-loved route is because unless you are physically with an item, you are there in store, you're able to see it before purchasing it in person, you really don't know what you're getting at the end of the day. I mean, heck, you could say that for new items as well. But just don't go into a purchase with fashion file blindly dare I say it be prepared to be disappointed that may sound a little negative but I was really excited about this bag and fashion file ruined it for me and I'm a little salty about it if you've had a similar situation with fashion file or with another pre-loved bag on a different platform definitely share your stories down below I think the more we can talk about the trials and tribulations of purchasing pre-loved I think it just ends up making all of us more savvy when it comes to our luxury purchases before I send this back to Fashion File, I will be doing a quick review on it. So if you're interested, definitely go check out that other video. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up, but I will catch you in the next one.